Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my kitchen. Uh, this morning, I'm going to be doing a, a highly requested video. I've had a lot of subscribers who ask me to do a video on showing how I do my uh, chicken and dressing. So this is what this going to be this morning. And um, right now, I'm fixing to take you through the process. I do hen and dressing. But you can do whatever parts of chicken that you want to. I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. Uh, uh, the old-fashioned way is when they made chicken and dressing back then. It was either um, a hen or a rooster. The two oldest birds on the yard. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you through this, the first step. The most important steps it is. One of the most important steps. I did a video on the other one, the cornbread. And that is... Um, showing you how I get my chicken broth. Uh, like I said, I use a hen because a hen is a, one of the old, is a, one of the oldest birds on the yard or in the in the uh, the chicken family and it renders up more flavor. It has more flavor in it and that's the reason the um Ola cooks used to use a hen and it's about time for the hen to move on anyway. So they would always use a hen and they would use the you know use it whole to make they uh to get their chicken broth out of now without any more talking because I'm gonna be talking to you during the process when I'm making uh making up the dressing but I have washed and cleaned I washed and cleaned my hen and that uh, this hen it was a frozen hen it wasn't fresh hen it had some uh you ain't got to worry about it, it had some it had the neck a liver and a gizzard in there. I already got that in the pot. But see what I did, I took the uh, I took like a half an onion. It was just a half onion that I had. And I stuck it in the um you ain't got to show in the cavity now. And I put it in the cavity of that of this hen, this bird. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go head on and put it over here in the pot. It's real simple. You got to show me wash your hands. Okay. Okay. Move this out the way for a minute. Can you get a little lower? Well, I just I got the hand over in the pot, and then I'm gonna start with my seasoning on it. Uh, you got to be careful with these seasoning because you're gonna let the can cook for maybe about a uh, hour and a half, and then you're gonna go back and you're gonna go in and test that broth and see if there's seasoning stuff right on it. Mainly just the sugar. I mean, not the sugar. Excuse me. Uh, please don't put no sugar like that. The salt or whatever kind of salt that you're using. I usually start out with maybe uh, because I don't want to. Uh, run the risk of getting it too salty. I usually start off with just two tablespoons. Not not tablespoon. This is two teaspoons. Please scratch that. Two teaspoons. And then this is a this is a broth based season, a chicken broth based seasoning. I don't know what, where you can find this at, but all you got to, what, what really what you can use is uh chicken or uh, chicken bouillon, chicken season, different whatever whatever type of chicken uh seasoning that you use. They used to didn't have to do too much of this with the hens and stuff back in the days because it it was it was real flavorful, but now you got to really. Uh, you know, season up your stuff now. This is a this is an old fashioned way of fixing dressing with some with some modern day twists. And uh just to start out with this I always use this is a two teaspoon uh, measuring spoon if you're wondering what I'm doing. But uh I usually put 
two of these here. Let me see. How many teaspoons is in a tablespoon? I think it's about two if it's not. But I usually put two tablespoons of that in there. Because we're going to put a lot of water in there. And it's going to take a lot of, you know, it's going to take quite a bit of season to season that water. Okay. And with the black pepper, I just take the black pepper and push till I think, I mean, shake it till I think I got maybe about a tablespoon of that over in there. That's a tablespoon of your black pepper. Okay. Put plenty of black pepper in my eyes. Okay, right here, I have uh, four stalks of celery uh, cut in half. And I usually leave the top spoils on there too. I just got them cut in half. Do not be intimidated with the amount of, of uh, celery that I'm putting in here because nowadays stuff don't ha is, is you know it don't have the flavor it used to have uh now that it has in it's kind of weaker. Now where I'm putting about where I'm putting about uh four stocks of celery in uh my chicken broth back then according to what how much dressing they was gonna put they would probably put just about three and I got two whole onions. Sometimes I cut them in half and sometimes I don't. But these onions pretty good and uh, I'm just going to put the whole onion over in the uh, in the pot. And then I'm going to fill it with water because you need plenty of broth. You got to cook that chicken so you have plenty of stock. I'll show you where I got my water level at when I get it all, get it all in. And I'm gonna put this when I put this hen on, you guys. I'm gonna start it out on high and let it come to a boil. But when it come to a boil, I'm gonna turn the the heat down on it to like a medium. Just say a medium, a medium, and it, because this this really this this need to cook slow. That was the first thing them cooks used to do in the morning time. They would, uh, if they didn't cook that uh, hen the night before, uh, they would get up early that morning. They would put that hen on, get that hen started. Or uh, either this was the day that they're going to make the dressing because sometimes they did it uh, the day before, the night before. Okay, can you see the water level I have in there? You don't want to get it up too full because when it comes to a boil, you want to take a chance of it um, boiling over. And then when this stuff comes to a boil, if you see some like foam or stuff on the top of it, just take you a spoon and skim it out. That's one thing I do. I'll skim that off of the chickens because I don't want to, you know, pour it, you know, boil it and pour, it, pour that water off and lose my flavor. Okay, let me get a spoon, just kind of stir them seasoning around a little bit. And then once this hen get to cooking real good, I'm going to see if this, because this hen really didn't have much fat on it. And I may have to put like a half a stick of butter in here, or either maybe I'll wait till I'm mixing up the dressing. And I'll put maybe like a half a stick of butter in there for the flavor and, you know, for the little oil. I mean the grease content in it. So that's all to it. Just the... Just what I told you, some chicken, some uh, chicken base, uh, either chicken broth, salt, and pepper, black pepper. And sometimes I put a little onion powder in here, and I'm, I'm going to do that at the second half, about at the hour and a half boiling point. Because, uh, like I say, hens are, are tougher than the fries, so you're going to have to, you want to cook this slow, but you're going to probably have to cook it a little longer. I, I will let you know how long I cook this here because when I come back to you, I'm going to be ready to, the broth going to be ready and I'm going to be ready to go ahead on and mix up the dressing. But um, normally, 
hens normally take about three hours to cook, sometime a little longer, but I'll be testing it along the way, way because really I don't like for it to uh, cook all the pieces. And I'll tell you all them details when I get back and start uh, fixing up the dressing, but let me get this hen on so we can, uh, I can start with this dressing. Like I said, remember I'm going to start it out on high when it comes to the boil. Um, when it comes to a boil, I'm going to cut it down to a medium low, but a little low boil, a little low boil. And just let it sit there and slowly cook for maybe about three hours. But I'll let you know exactly how long I cooked it. Because this is a, a, a smaller hen than I normally get. This hen uh, cost me approximately uh, $7.00. But when I'm fixing dressing and stuff for my family uh, at the holidays and stuff like that, normally I pay about 10 bucks for my hen. And sometimes I try to get a fresh one if I can find it. But sometimes it's hard. This time, you know, before the holidays come in, it's kind of hard to find a fresh hen down this way. But okay, I'll be back uh, when I'm ready to start the second process of my uh, hen and dressing. Right here, I have one skillet of egg bread already crumbled, and I got the I got the recipe up with, for my cornbread recipe. I didn't have it. I didn't do it in this video because uh, it'll have been too long. And uh, okay, and right here, let me move this out the way. Right here, this is just part of the uh, chicken broth that I made. You know, I just got through showing you how I made the chicken broth. So it's ready. And let me tell you this here. The hen that I used, it was a little, it was a little tough. I, it, all, it, it cooked three hours. I let it, did it three hours. I, you know, I told you because I, I had it on low. So I did three hours on it. But I'll show you the hen later on in this process. But let me tell you what you're going to need from, for your dressing. Okay, before I get started, let me, uh, uh, this here, right here, this is about seven pieces of toasted white bread. Seven pieces of toasted bread. But I'm going to do something with that right, right quick. Okay, I'm going to take some chicken broth. And I'm going to pour it over the spread. I'm going to be letting it soak while I get all the rest of my ingredients mixed up. I'm going to let it soak and then I'm going to mash it up and then I'm going to incorporate it into my dressing. That's about enough. Let me sit that back out the way so okay the rest of the ingredients and I'm going in on and taking the uh the uh, paper off of it because I'm getting when I get through telling you what we need I'm get ready to uh, mix it up okay this right here is uh seven not seven is four stalks of celery that I had sauteed in like a teaspoon of uh butter I sauteed it maybe I sauteed it maybe about about four minutes on kind of medium. I don't I don't do anything on high. I just slowly sauteed them that you know to bring up the flavor and then that'll keep uh, help from having to uh, when you put your dressing in the oven then have to stay in there so long. Okay, that was uh, four stalks of celery and I would have put more but I didn't have an extra salt. Stalk. The reason I would have put more is because when I Taste tested my broth. You know, I told you I was gonna go back and test that broth after about an hour and a half or close to two hours cooking. I see that my savory wasn't the best because uh you know sometimes that stuff is is not as uh, flavorful or whatever that it, that it should be. But um, this right here is two large onions, two large onions that I got sautéed the same way I did that celery. Two large onions. Okay. Uh, and then I got one can of 
cream of chicken. Now this is a modern twist to the dressing because most uh, back then they didn't really put the cream of chicken and stuff. I'll be talking to you more about that as I go along the process. And this here's another modern twist. You don't have to put this in a, uh, like some of this, a lot of this stuff is optional if you don't like it in your dressing. But I'm just showing you what I put in my dressing. Remember that this is what I put in my dressing because the, the main important parts of this dressing is that cornbread and getting that broth sift of uh, season right. And the next and the next ingredients, the rest of the ingredients is gonna it's gonna be to your taste what you like and not like. Cause I don't put I don't put bell pepper in my I don't put bell pepper in my dressing. That's a preference, a personal preference. And um, and I tell you something else too that you might not know. Long when I was when I was growing up, they you know they didn't put bell pepper in there. That started in the later years putting bell peppers in dressing. You only had your celery, your onion, and that chicken broth, which I told you is about the, about the main character, and uh, some sage and thyme and salt and pepper and that was some of the best dressing you could ever put in your mouth okay you're gonna need one box according to what size uh what amount of dressing you trying to uh, make see i like the reason i use this here i like the uh little croutons in there that helps make my dressing uh put a medium inside of my dressing and i like them um uh, herbs and seasoning in it and um Okay, let me get over here and show you the rest. Okay, this is something I always do with my dressing. Once I get everything mixed up in that dressing, to make that everything kind of marry out and blend and be mild and very seasoned, seasoned together, I always put maybe about two tablespoons of sugar. I don't use sweet bread, but I definitely put a couple of tablespoons of sugar. And this right here, is the ground ground sage i usually use rub sage but they don't got so expensive with that that's what i growed up using was the rub sage you know rub sage all you have to do is take maybe about a a, a teaspoonful of that and put it in your hand and rub that's when it's called rub that when you rub it brings up the oils and the the uh, flavor to that sage and it, it, it makes for some good dressing and this is the time. Uh, what else? Okay. This right here. I'm going to drop that camera and that, that chicken bro. Then it's going to be all over. This right here is a. Uh, this is three chopped and diced eggs. And let me tell you the little history with that. I'll show you at what part. Of the dressing, the mixing of the dressing, that um, I'm gonna add these chopped boiled eggs. Remember to watch it pretty closely. Now you can also use uh, raw eggs, raw eggs in your dressing. To beat you up a couple of eggs, two or three eggs, whatever, ever how much, uh, ever how much dressing that you have. You can beat that up, and then after you get through mixing your dressing. Then you can incorporate that into your dressing, then put it in the oven. But the reason I don't do that, most of the time when I fix dressing, I I, I freeze it, the dress. I you know put some of it in freezer freezer bags and I freeze it so I don't mix that raw egg in there. That's the reason I use the uh, boiled egg because I don't I, I'm not because I'm not cooking it all right then, and I'm definitely not gonna put that raw egg in there. Now and then, when it, if I do put a raw egg after I uh, after I done frozen and I get a bag out and I let it throw out and I just want to put the two raw eggs and don't want to fool with the boiled egg, I will put it in then. But I'll be ready to go ahead on and cook it. It's not you know I'm not gonna store that raw egg like that. Okay, I think I told you about everything. The ingredients and now I'm fixing to get this all. Uh, uh, excuse me a minute. Let me get my utensils that I'm going to need back over here. And I'm fixing to bring that uh, cornbread back over here. And we're going to get the mixing.
okay you the first thing that I do is go ahead on and uh add, add uh, that box of uh I love the seasoning in this. I, I only use and then when I fix turkey and dressing, I use the uh, turkey uh stuffing. Okay. Let me uh excuse me a minute. Okay, I got my potato masher. You're going to need a potato masher too. Well, I, I ain't going to say what you're going to need. I don't know how you mix your dressing up. But, uh, take this potato masher and mash this bread up. So, I'm working in a, in, a, in a small space. So, bear with me. I don't get it mashed up that good because I can't get to it. Um, it'll get mashed up in the process. Feel free to add your toasted bread to it. You really don't realize what a difference that make. Now they've been putting bread and stuff in the dressing for many many years because simply because I told you they use that stone grind meal and that meal can be it could be just kind of tight and they would put all these uh, put bread and stuff like in there and just kind of help the texture of it so it won't be so coarse you don't want just all plain meal up there don't you gonna have some stiff dressing if you go put just plain cornbread and, and especially if you use that um. I don't even know what type of bread, uh, meal, and stuff people use nowadays. But if they use that um, that stone ground meal like they used to use a long time ago, you got to put a lot of things in there to uh, kind of lighten that. Uh, uh, let me get me a paper towel. Okay, do you want to go around and get in front of me now? Are you ready? Because I'm getting ready to mix it up. Just probably be better if you stand. Yeah. Stand over there. That'll probably let me get my utensils over here. We're trying to, it's a tight spot because I'm doing stuff in an area that I don't normally do. Uh, stuff in. Okay, what I'm going to do next is uh, let me get my measuring cup back. Hold on a minute, I'll be right back. I forgot I had to use this cup again and I stuck it in the sink, but uh see how much this stock that I'm starting in here with. Just gonna start max mashing and mixing it up and keep adding my stock as needed. You got it where they can see what I'm doing. I believe you would have did better with a bit on, over in the bowl if you start or stood it like over in the front part. That's what Brittany said. And just run the lens out some. No, I'm gonna talk. Just uh, 
I want to make sure you get a good angle. There's a lot of work going at this. My daughter films better. I mean, films different. <laughs> I said better. There's some more to stop. And you use just as much broth as you need. That's really the best to make your own chicken broth. But I don't know, you know, if you make your, uh, if you buy it, you know how to use it. I can't, I can't speak on that. But it needs quite a bit of broth to get this stuff to the right consistency. Just like I was telling you in the cornbread uh, video, you got to have this stuff at the right consistency for it to work for you right. I try to get it about like I want it before I start adding the rest of my stuff. And then it, it'll be absorbing some of that liquid. And then I know how much I how much more broth I'm gonna need in here. Don't get too scared that you're getting your dressing too loose. Because like I said, it's going that bread gonna start absorbing some. And I think I had a couple of friends that I showed how to uh I, you know, I took them step by step on how to do the dressing, and they told me right off the bat before we even got started, it's good. I don't use near that much broth. I said, well, <laughs> they were saying they were having a problem with the dressing being too stiff, not the right consistency, and they couldn't understand how they how I was getting mines like that because um, they were doing what I told them. I mean, they was they was using what I had told them to use, and then when we when I start when I when, uh, when they came over and I showed them how to do that, so that's that's one thing I know I'm doing wrong right there. I'm not getting that stuff loose enough. Okay, you see how it? Can you see how what the uh, consistency of it right now? Before I start adding all the rest of my vegetables and seasoning into it. And another thing I'm gonna tell you. When I did uh, test my broth, I put maybe about uh, two tablespoons or four of a stick of butter in there. Oh, here, here go the celery. Go ahead on and stick the onions in there. I told you all this and stuff is sauteed. And sometimes I put green onions in my dressing corner of what type I'm fixing. If I'm fixing some for, for company or when I was fixing it for the family meal, I want to dress it up. And now sometimes uh, I do put a little bit of pepper in it if I'm carrying, you know, if I'm taking it out. But I stopped putting bell pepper in my dressing years ago years ago in my mama lifetime she had some little gallbladder issues and uh she couldn't use bell pepper and we definitely were gonna, we're gonna fix that you know do the dressing without the uh i mean do the do dressing where she couldn't eat it with the bell pepper because she did not put bell pepper in hers at all. I never know my mom to put bell pepper in her dressing. That was something, one of them modern twist, twists that we came up with. But she still, she never did get used to do it. Let me move some of this stuff out of my way so I can find what I'm looking for. Just one can of this cream of chicken because I don't have as much dressing as I normally fix. I was just trying to fix up 
fix enough to take y'all through a whole recipe. Clean the chicken. You want to make sure you get all your cream of chicken out your, con out your container. Just take it, put you a little of that chicken broth over in there. You know, stuff is too expensive to be wasting. So I'll take that and put it over there. Make sure I get it all. Now you can mix your dressing up in 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 any steps you want to. That ain't no set set thing. This is the way I mix mine up. It's just always easier for me to do it like this. I can handle it and get it better incorporated in. Make sure everything be thoroughly mixed. I'm not going to use this other can of a uh, chicken, cream of chicken. So you see what it looked like. This amount of dressing, usually I would use that, but uh, I don't have as much uh, dressing that I normally have. So, okay. Go ahead on and I'll sprinkle them that little couple of tablespoons of sugar in there. For the lady that asked me, would I put the ingredients in the uh uh in the description box? And uh I told you when my daughter comes, I'm gonna have her to go with some videos and put it in there. But I was trying to do my videos showing the ingredients and stuff beforehand because I, I'm not computer savvy and all that kind of stuff like that. And it'll probably take me longer to fix it to try to do that stuff with my eyesight with a bit, rather than, uh, you know, get it in the description box. I just start fooling around with these computers and stuff and I still ain't no way who I should be because I never was interested in, uh, trying to learn them. That's the reason I hadn't did it. Okay. This is your ground sage. And with this amount of dressing, I normally put a teaspoonful. Now you be careful with your sage. Because sage is aggressive. It will take clean over if you put too much in that. That's the reason I always put that uh, those little couple of teaspoons of sugar in case it want to kind of act up a little bit and you can and some people use their uh, poetry season but I just I just stick to what my okay everybody I'm gonna I hope uh, that everything is being recorded but my husband said we having a little uh, difficulties with the camera he don't really know how to work it that well but I think I told you I put the teaspoon I must take up at this point where he thought he uh, it messed up and it might not have. But um, I put a teaspoon of this ground uh, ground sage in, and I put a teaspoon of the uh, thyme. You got it? Okay. And I'm just uh, start mixing. I'm going to put some uh, black pepper in here. I'm going to say this is approximately approximately a uh, tablespoon. Or less. But you know you to put it in the way you are. The way you have the amount that you want. Let's see can I show you 
the consistency of it. I think I'm going to put just a little bit more broth in there. So I can't give you no measurements on how much broth we put in there. Serena, I was showing you how much it was in the bowl and how much I, uh, uh, how much liquid that, I mean water that I put in that uh, hen. It had reduced down a little bit, but not very much. Simply because I cooked it so, I cooked it so low. kind of mash around here that I don't feel any more lumps. My daughter normally she uh always crumble the bread and stuff for me. She do such a good job on it. I ain't had to do that in so long till uh it wasn't did near as good as what she did. But I knew that this, uh, this liquid was going to dissolve it all. But uh that's it. This is pretty well mixed up. And I'm gonna go over here and get the uh, container. What is it? What is it, something? Eggs. See if you had a listen, I told you that's go that go in at a different time. But thank you. My husband was telling me I forgot the eggs, but I told you earlier when I was mixing it up, when I was telling you what the ingredients and stuff was, that these two boiled eggs, they're going to go in at a different point in the cooking process, and I'll show you when I'm going to put them in, okay? Hold it over just so I can let them see. You don't want it soupy. Well, it's gonna run down the road and you don't want it stiff like it's in the mark. I'm trying to show you the consistency of it. That's another important point in making a dress. Cause this dressing has got to cook. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you through the steps of, since I say old fashioned, I'm gonna show you how they uh, used to cook it up. I'm going to show you the steps they used to use with that for the ones don't know. I've really been blessed on this channel that I got some uh, mature ladies on that on this channel and they really know what I'm what I'm what I'm really talking about that what I'm trying to you know teach them. I mean I really would say teach but um uh, with my techniques and stuff and I really appreciate you ladies you're just a blessing to me I feel it's just a blessing. I said, God, no, you're watching out for me. Because I tell you, my motto for starting this channel was to uh, do videos for my grandkids and all that. Because a lot of, I have, when I go to the grocery stores, I'm going to give you a little, little short uh, story time. When I be going in the grocery stores a lot of times and I be purchasing different things in the uh, cashier, sometimes it be uh, male or female, they be asking me, what are you going to cook? I'll be trying to guess what I'm going to cook and I'll tell them or whatever. And then they always say something like, my grandma used to fix that and it was great and good and they like it and whatever, but they don't know how to fix it. And I said, well, you know, I'll be trying to tell them what they said. Oh, they just would mess it up. So, and they went and got a, they went on the internet and got a recipe and it didn't turn out right and all that kind of stuff. It used to make me feel so sad when they, I'm like, they up there working on the holidays and then got to work on the holidays and then a lot of time they get off and even got a different meal. But uh, my motto for life, let me tell you my motto for life I always have been. If I can help somebody while I travel alone, then my living won't be in vain. So if I can only help one person help one person to learn that's what I feel that God has me here for to help that one person that they he heard they pray and then so let me go uh get my uh roasting pan and uh show you what 
I'm going to cook this up. I meant I already have my oven on. This is a roasting pan. I got a another pan that's bigger. Uh, maybe have two pans, right? Two, <laughs> two or three pans is bigger. But uh, I could have totally cooked this in something else. But I just want to, I want to let you see what I was doing. And I'm going to cook all of this off because I'm going to share it with somebody. Usually I would try to freeze it. But I'm going to throw this in. Thank you. I want you to see all the ingredients I put in. I want you to get a good good idea as how much it's gonna make up. When I'm fixing um fixing dressing, when we having a family gathering or something, I always sometimes I fix a a bacon dish, which we bacon pan, and then my uh cast iron skillet full of cornbread because I'll be fixing more dressing then. Okay, so you see how far the lever it is up this pan? Did I, I don't know if I forgot to tell you or not. I sprayed my uh, roasting pan with some uh, uh, cooking spray. But, um, ooh, my cat number four. I always cover my dressing. Even if I do soak it, put it, not, uh, have it in the refrigerator sitting overnight, I always cover my pan. For that first cooking, when I first put it in the oven. Now, if you got a roasting pan, and I mean, you got a like I got a this is a roasting pan that do have a top to it, but uh, I just like to do it this way better. Okay, I got a pretty well covered. So let me tell you what I'm, I'm going to do next. I got my oven set for 350 degrees. I'm going to put this in there and uh, I'm going to let it cook maybe about an uh, hour, hour and a half. So if I had more than this, I would cook it at 325 before I do my first stir. 
And then when I come back after maybe about that um, an hour better, since it ain't that much in here, it may not I may not let it cook, but an hour before I stir it, because I'm gonna check on it. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna come back, and then I'm gonna stir stir my dressing. And uh, when I stir it, I'm gonna put my uh, I'm gonna put my eggs in it. And then I'm gonna cook it out because you look when I do that that first stir, it's be it's it be pretty close to done. And I read them kind of uh, kind of working by ear because this is a such a small amount that I, that uh, I'm not sure how it's going how long it's gonna take for the cooking. So um, I'm gonna get ready to put this in the oven for about an hour. Then when I come back, I'm gonna put my eggs in there and I'm gonna stir it and then I'm gonna go ahead on and then I'm gonna introduce the chicken back in. I might and then I might not, but I introduce that hen back into the equation. But um, I'll be back when it's time to do the next step. Let me see for how I got them right sitting. You see how I got my right sitting about middle ways or so? Cause I don't have it sitting real sitting up real high. It's just middle ways. Cause that's I I cook everything like that. Okay, let me get my camera from some of this heat. Okay, everybody. We're going into the final steps and stages of this here dressing. Now, you know, I told you I had it in the oven for uh, the hour or so, whatever. Now, what I'm going to do, can you get it over here so they can see? We always stir our dressing. That's the reason I put that foil over. The, the dressing is basically done. I'm going to put it back in the oven probably for about 30 minutes. And then um, I'm gonna let it. Uh, I'm gonna let it. Uh, sometime I turn my oven on broil for maybe a, a few minutes. I'm gonna put it back in there after I get this here did. I'm gonna put it back in there for 30 minutes and probably about the last two or three minutes I put it on broil because I'm gonna I'm gonna put that chicken in it. All right, hit them three boiled eggs. I'm fixing to incorporate those eggs into this dressing. Incorporate, isn't it? Which one it is? Is it gonna be a corporate? Is it gonna cooperate or incorporate? Okay. And at this point, if you think your dressing is a little too stiff, I'm stirring it from the bottom. Everything. If you think it's a little too stiff, you can uh, go in. And add you a little bit more chicken broth. But this is good enough because I'm not, like I said, it's not going to be much longer. This, this here is not going to be the uh, consistency to it when we're eating it. Like I said, I don't, I don't like it running down the highway. And I don't want it stiff as a board. And uh, let me show you. This is the the, the, the breast from that um hen. My mama used to lay her hen on top of her dressing because some people like meat uh boiled like that. Mainly my daddy, but uh, <laughs> but um, because we always had fried chicken, the ham, and other uh um meats and stuff that just wasn't the. Uh, Main uh, main meat you were gonna have. I'm gonna pour a little bit more broth over here just to show you how I would do that. Cause uh, like I told you, this hen didn't have a lot of fat to it. Did I show them this little excess broth? From okay, this is the um, broth I had left from my hen. That would be enough to fix me a little uh, giblet gravy. Giblet 
Jimmy, what y'all call it? shake it and it be all smooth looking. I know I got the consistency right. Now this is some of the mother parts of that hen. I'm just going to make this a thigh. Just going to lay up on the, on the chicken. Um, it did pretty good of uh, staying together. Can't see it. I cooked it the pizza, but uh, I um, uh, I got it out the pot before it had cooled off. If I had uh, had if, if I had to let it cool off some more, it would have probably just stayed whole. But this is the thigh, the leg, and the wing. I sort of broke it all up so I can put it on the top of it. Now this is what I do. I put my um, chicken on top. I do not put chicken inside of my uh, my dressing. I didn't. I didn't grow up doing it that way. I mean, I wasn't taught to do it that way, and I don't do do it. And that's just uh, another personal preference. And uh, I fix one. I used to fix a chicken uh, dressing casserole that a friend gave me the recipe two years ago and uh, I fixed it. It, it tastes good and everything but my family did not like uh, the chicken inside of the dressing so that's the reason I don't I, don't, I, I never puts it in there there's nothing wrong with it if you like chicken inside of your dressing or whatever you go right ahead on but they do not like chicken on the inside. And when I put this on the top of it, I just put it on there really to show you. They gonna move that out the way and get to the dressing. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't think about that chicken on top of it. So that's the reason I'm going to... Uh, I hadn't had me uh, some chicken salad made out of hen in a while. You, have you ever uh, 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 did your chicken salad out of hen? It is so good. It's so flavorful. You know, when you do it with hen. Normally, I'd just be doing it out of thighs or uh, some chicken breast. Okay, you guys. This here um, is the final process. When I put it in that oven and let it bake maybe about, just say, 20, about 20, min 20 more minutes, I'm going to turn the oven on broil and let it brown. And I'm going to come back and show it to you as the final process. But, um... Let it's one other thing I want to say to you. I think I said when I was showing you the ingredients and stuff that I was putting in there. If I'm not mistaken, I said four stalks of celery. Somebody may get that mixed up and think I'm talking about a whole, uh, whole stalk, a whole bunch of celery. But I I usually say I usually call celery a bunch of celery. But uh, that may be the, not the right word, but that's the word I use. And uh, I had never had to do this before, so I want to make sure I uh, uh, say it right so you can get understanding. But it's ribs, four ribs of celery, four individual ribs of celery, and that's what I put in there. Not a bunch, four, not a stalk. Yeah, not a stalk. So let me put this in the oven and finish this in process. And I um. I hope that I what I did in showing you this process that you could understand. And I think I told you everything that um you can that you need to know that you can successfully successfully whatever fix you a uh, pan of delicious dressing or either I, I I gave you some tips that you can add to your already delicious dressing. So I appreciate you watching. Another thing I don't think I. 
I know you're going to say, I'm tired of that woman saying one more thing. But another thing I was going to tell you, and I might have said that, about uh, dressing and dumplings back in the days was either made out of the rooster or the hen. I think I said that. Seems like I remember saying that. I was so busy trying to remember to do everything that I might have forgot it. So I'll be I'll be back showing you the, the uh, finished products, and I don't even know if I come back on here and talk. I just let my husband finish a uh, video uh, tape it showing you um, what it looked like. And uh, you want me to end the video? So uh, uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I ain't even thinking about you if you give me a thumb down. And uh, comment below. Like you got any questions that you think I missed something that you didn't understand it. That's the best way I can uh, answer you through a comment. And because uh, I think I covered everything. And uh, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I try to keep up with all my comments. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for the support. And bye. All right, you guys. This is it. The, uh, I let it stay in the oven about uh, 20, 20 minutes. It did turn it, uh, turn it on broil for maybe about two minutes. Well, that would have been two minutes. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.